All right, everybody, it's Chris Bronson here. And today we've got Tara Garrison, Coach Tara. We've known each other for a couple of years now. We met in, was it um, Omaha a few years ago? I think so, yeah. For the first time? Yeah. Yeah. And um, we've done a couple of different episodes uh, with each other on different platforms and channels and all that kind of stuff over the last couple of years. But I really wanted to get you on here and talk to you uh, kind of coach to coach, but also kind of person to person. Uh, we, you know, we were just talking a second ago before we went live that, you know, everyone's got their own story, um, but we all kind of hit the same checkpoint. So I'm curious what your story is. I know um, you haven't always been this, you know, muscular buff woman on Instagram. You've got a story just like I do um, of transformation and change and all sorts of different things. So just tell us a little bit real quick about who you are now, where you are, what you're doing, and then we can kind of take some the time capsule back and, and see where it all started. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. I'm actually writing a book right now about all of this. So it's fresh on my mind to see how I do sharing it audibly with you guys. <laughs> but, you know, I appreciate this because, like, I think, especially because a couple of my social media platforms are growing really fast right now, right? So I have a yeah. lot of people in my arena who they just see me as this, like, muscular chick who posts workout videos and seems to know some stuff about nutrition and like, that's it. Right. And you know, mind some mindset stuff. And I'm like, man, if they, if people understood where I came from, you know, like, I'm like, I want to share because the reason I'm writing the book, because I resisted writing the book for a long time. Cause I was like, dude, I Dang. like, I don't need, I'm a coach. It's not about me. Like, I don't need to like write a whole book about my freaking life story, like blah, 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 you know? And so who I, cares, who cares about who, terror, right? Yeah. Like, Oh, yeah. cool. I changed my life story. Number 5 billion, 600 million. You know what I mean? So I like yeah. resisted it for that reason, but I kept feeling this nudge and this nudge and this nudge and this nudge. And finally I realized I was like, you know what? I have been through so many similar traumas in my life of so many of my clients. And for some reason, I have been gifted these paths and these tools and these mentors out of it. And I'm living in a completely different reality now. And I think because I've been through so many common traumas and have found a way out where I'm at peace, you know, writing this book has been really illuminating for me because. I've been through some hard, hard stuff. And some of my, you know, family friends are like, dude, do you need to like go jump in the ocean and like, you know, detox all that emotion? I'm like, you know what? It's, I, I, it's been really cool because it's, that's not what's going on. Like I can tell I'm in a good place with this stuff now, you that's know? Awesome. So I'll, I'll share that. Like now I'm in a place where like, I can say truly that I really love myself. I love how I treat myself. I, I, I really, um, I'm grateful to show up in all of my health endeavors from a place of love, uh, to show up in my personal growth efforts in a place of mm, calm and no pressure, but also like wanting what's best for myself. You know, I'm yeah. running a successful coaching business now and have good relationships with my kids. And it's, you know, it definitely wasn't always the case. I definitely wasn't always fit. And so I'll share kind of when you say, that we hit these certain checkpoints. I think anyone who's been through a really deep, like kind of soul crushing, transformative type experience, um, it's usually in my experience because there were all these mm, unhealed things that happened in childhood and teenage years and early life, you know, young adulthood that never got dealt with. And we're living in all these patterns that are not yeah. really us until they kind of destroy us. And then we're forced to look at it, right? And so for me, you know, the quick childhood, the quick version, uh, grew up with the youngest of five kids with a mom with mental illness, a single mom with mental illness, un without support. She was in very much denial of that. And so ha home life was chaotic. We were very poor. Uh, my mom was gone a lot because understandably couldn't handle the pressure of that a lot. So we were left to fend for ourselves didn't have a lot of food a lot of times. Sometimes we didn't have electricity, phone bills, you know, it was, it was rough in some ways. It was beautiful in some ways. And it's cool to see all of that now. But um, what happened in me was I really started to develop like a relationship with food of food scarcity. So when there was food, mm -hmm. I would just eat and eat and eat, you know, and had this unconscious 
must make sure I have food available to me at all times and hurry and just eat as much as you can before it's gone. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so, and then, you know, a lot of, I was sexually abused all growing up. I had, a, you know, there were a lot of issues in our, our family and all, none of that was dealt with at all. Right. And so I started to gain weight. I turned to food for comfort. Um, I just lived that typical standard American lifestyle, you know, got married, had four kids, standard American life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Um, sounds sounds then, a lot. Or it sounds very similar, actually. Yeah, married, I'm sure. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Many people can relate to that, right? And uh, probably about 11 years or so into my marriage, um, and my ex-husband has told me, given me like his okay to share this because yeah. you know he's been on a healing journey of his own with it. But um, I I was Mormon. I was raised Mormon, and in the Mormon church, porn is really bad. And I found mm -hmm. out about 11 years into our marriage that he 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 admitted to me that he'd been like super addicted to porn our whole marriage. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so yeah. me having done no work of healing at all from my super chaotic childhood. I mean, I hadn't even told him I had been sexually abused. <laughs> We'd been married for over a decade. I didn't even tell him, you know, yeah. it was like, didn't happen. Stick my head in the sand and don't deal with any of my stuff. Right. And so that triggered a lot of the unconscious patterns that I had from all of that stuff, not to mention societal programming for women is really heavy on you are not enough and you're never going to be sexy enough and never going to be hot enough and you're, you know, never enough. And so all of this unconscious stuff got triggered of, I must not have been hot enough for him. Okay. Mm, and so yep. that was how that when I really catapulted my fitness transformation, it was from that place of not good enough proving. Mm -hmm. Um, but what happened was so interesting. Like I had that unhealthy motivation, which as you know, very well, unhealthy motivations can really drive action Sure. <laughs> when someone's yep. got to prove, you know, it's like the business guy that's got to prove that he's good enough. That he's, you know, cause like business is kind of the same thing for men as body is for women you know right. i mean there's crossover but it's that's, a big uh, one that, that's that's my story we can we could go that's a whole nother video <laughs> yeah so um anyway you it, it can drive action and it did but while i was in this not good enough gotta earn my value you know i'm gonna quote unquote save save him from ever feeling tempted to look at porn again because i'm gonna be hotter right. than all look. those porn chicks and if this is deep down i really actually feel like this was all my fault and i had all these people oh, okay. and just all yeah. but it, in in my cognitive mind i'm like no it, it's not about me it, you know and it, i i know that i know that no 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 <laughs> yeah you know, that right. was just all talk emotionally that is 100 percent what was running the show was all those subconscious stories but what was so fascinating was while i was in that proving obsessive energy i was also falling in love with training and the human body and nutrition and how much better i was feeling and like mm -hmm. was beyond i became um kind of obsessed but more in a healthy way with the human body because it was just so and and how i could feel like i was blown away by how good i could feel you know i went through a really pretty significant transformation i was probably about 175 pounds i'm almost five seven you know without muscle you know it was like yeah. body fat 175 yeah. to 135 and 11 percent body fat after a year and a half wow yeah, you know what uh, I mean. You dove, you dove in head first. Yeah, I I went like balls to the wall for would lack you, of would a better recommend, phrase. Would you recommend people do that? No, get... <laughs> that's what I mean by like when you have a unhealthy motivation sometimes, and you yeah. got to prove your value it, through it. Right. It's crazy how sometimes the action can be beneficial. Yes. But because of the motivation isn't healthy, you, we tend to do more of it than we should. Like we, we go, we go to the extreme. Like it becomes yes, an exercise, addiction. Exercising is great, but it's like a trauma. It's like a trauma bond. You have now a trauma bond with exercise. Yeah. That's where I was. Right. right? And it, yeah. it, and it was, you know, very much, very much an addiction. It, it took over my entire psyche. You know, yeah. it was just like, this is all that matters. <laughs> and, um, I'm great. I share that openly because like what was so cool is, you know, after that, I ended up actually leaving Mormonism, getting divorced, going through this massive life change that was actually very needed in my life. I was very out of alignment in my life across the board. And 
getting healthy in my mind actually really woke me up. It really, I always call like weightlifting my, the entry point to my accidental personal awakening. When my mind started working better, I just, I could see things more clearly. I, I had confidence, not because of how I looked, because I was still a pretty much in a very insecure place trying to prove my value at this point. But when I say I had confidence, like I did have confidence in like my own opinion about things that I had never had before. It was like my dopamine pathways or something just went way up, you know? And so, um, so yeah, that was pretty catastrophic. You know, I had four kids We're now we're not Mormon anymore. We were super Mormon. Now we're divorced. And then I got in a relation, a really unhealthy relationship right after that, yeah. that deep inner work. Before we, get, before we get into that, I want to go, but you said a couple things in that background um you talked about doing the work you know healing mm -hmm. developing that self-awareness and going through that process it is a common theme that i deal with and work with with my clients is getting them to understand how important we talk about the why all the time and i'm realizing the longer i the longer i coach and the longer i'm in this industry doing this that it's not just the why why you're doing mm-hmm there's the why, why are you, what doing it from the perspective, what do I want? Why do I want this? What, you know, mm -hmm. what is it that I want? Mm -hmm. Why am I doing this? But then mm -hmm. there's also the, why am I doing this? Why mm -hmm. am I doing the things that I'm doing now? Mm -hmm. Why are those things, you know, mm -hmm. how does the things that have happened in the past impact what I'm doing today? Mm -hmm. So could you talk real quick, like, what is the importance of, we, we hear the phrase childhood trauma and mm -hmm. everybody immediately goes, oh, what's that got to do with me trying to lose Mm -hmm. Right. Could you talk mm -hmm. a little bit about that connection? Of yeah. This, the, the mental, the perception and the, the, the limiting beliefs and the, the values and the, all, all of that stuff and how it, the reason you're struggling with sticking to a nutrition or fitness plan now and how those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the stories that you hold a hold true about yourself unconsciously. Mm -hmm. Right. And so like, we'll use that example. When, when I was already, you know, shredded, muscular, whatever, I still held the story. Like I'm not good enough. I'm not, I, I, I was 11% body fat Bronson. Like I had no, I, I was still trying to lose weight. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so it was really deep, like not good enough, not good enough, not good enough more, you know? And so let's take that for somebody that, they hold the story that, you know, it might not be coming in their conscious mind all the time, but I bet it's drifted in there a few times of just, I, I'm not, I'm not really going to do this. I can't, I can't do this. I'm not actually going to be able to lose weight. Like that's, that is, and whatever is the unconscious story, that is the truth. And I, the example I share with my clients a lot is like right now, if I say I am going to make a billion dollars tomorrow, how do I feel in my body? Mm -hmm. That is the truth. My body is saying like, no, you're not. <laughs> right. It's like, Meh. you know, but What's if I the say. Thing that pops in your mind when you say something uh, positive about your life or your potential. Yeah. So if you say like, I'm going to, I know, I know I'm going to lose weight and you can feel that feeling in your body of like, no, you're not. That's the truth. And so that's where the work needs to be done is more on these unconscious things. So yeah, when we talk about the childhood stuff, it's like, okay, so what stories do you hold true about yourself? What is your self-concept, your identity? If your self-concept is I am mildly overweight, that I'm that that is what you are going to continue to get. And all of your actions will validate that belief that you hold true about yourself. Right. So that was a big thing for me. Like, even though, yeah, I was in all, in all that unhealthy stuff, it's not like it wasn't still freaking hard as crap to do that. You yeah. know, I had to go head on with so many old patterns. And, and it takes time. It's, not, yeah, it's, it's time. not an overnight thing, right? It's one little thing. Oh, I realized this. And then six months later, oh, crap, I just realized something else. Right. You know, it's. Right. And I mean, builds on itself. I will say to my credit a little bit, there's plenty of women out there that feel not good enough with their body, but they still don't get fit. And yeah. so there were some mindset lessons that well, came in that journey. You I know, that's a great example of the, of, of how everyone's different. Some, some people can have the not good enough. And instead of it driving them to try and get better, it prevents them from doing anything. It did that. I there's mean, that's a, how there's, I, a, there's mm -hmm. a different there's a different belief system for that person than the what than what you were doing. 
Yeah, I think, I mean, that's totally. And that was my way of operating forever. It was like, don't even really try that hard Mm because like, you know, you're not ever going to be able to do anything like that. Not really. You know, it might, I was the typical, you know, I'm, oh, time to eat salads again, posting on my little personal Instagram, like, time to diet again. This sucks, you know, and lasts for like a week. Like I'm talking about like some salad, like it's a bad thing or something, you know? Um, and so, um, anyway, but I think when you get, when you're ready or when the pain gets bad enough Mm -hmm. and some, some sense of desperation and from some sort of, it's usually pain. It is usually pain in some way that makes people say, okay, this matters. Like I want out of this now. Like I am, I have got to figure out how to get out of this pain that I am in that generally speaking is what drives most people. But I, the reason I don't bash that. And the reason I even share this is because that sometimes that painful, you're trying to run from pain. It can set you on the trajectory of learning some things that can be very beneficial for your life. And you can still heal. You can still do the, you know, therapy and mindset coaching and all those things. But who are we to say that that wasn't part of your purpose? Like, look at my life now. I 100% feel that that was part of my life purpose for a reason. So yeah, was it unhealthy motivation? Sure. Was I in a lot of emotional pain and all messed up in my psyche? Yeah. Yeah. And I truly feel that that was part of my purpose. <laughs> well, and that, and without that, what book would you have to write? Right. And, and look how many people right. I've story, been able to help. Yeah. The story matters. And this, not just for you and for me as coaches, right, who have gotten out there and, and started building this platform to share our stories and our, and I like to, t- I like to talk about sharing my clients' stories as well. Um, you know, I'm a firm believer and I tell people as often as possible, I don't care if you ever get 10,000 followers, get out there and tell people your story, get out there and talk mm-hmm. about what's happening to you and how you're mm-hmm. changing and growing and, mm-hmm. and it's totally. your lifestyle because somebody needs to hear it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not everyone's going to, going to click with me. Not everyone's going to click with you, Right. but the more people that share what's working for them and how they're changing their mm-hmm. lives and getting better then the more opportunities other people will have to hear something exactly. that could change them. It's just a stimulus for them and their own path. Yep. Yeah. So, um, let's see, where do you want to go from here? Oh yeah. Well, I still got a couple of things. We, we got, okay. we're going to be here for a long time. I got, a, <laughs> I got a couple of things. Um, one of the things, well, I just want to point one thing out too. And we talk about childhood trauma a lot. And I think there's a negative connotation there. I like, I like to talk about childhood experience mm-hmm. because not all of it is trauma. Yeah. Some of it is just learned behavior. Some of it yeah. is just your expectation, what you're exposed to, the things you see repetitively as a child, mm-hmm. examples that are set for you in your in your lifestyle, your family, whatever. Mm-hmm. Right? You may have learned growing up that you show love by giving people food mm-hmm. or that you accept love by eating other people's food. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. That could be a simple thing. It's not necessarily trauma. It's just a habit that was formed in your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Understanding what that is, is important too. Yeah, whether it's traumas or learned behaviors or whatever, it right. all that really matters are what are the stories that I created about myself and about reality based off of that thing. Bingo. So it could just be I've had clients have issues where they're like terrified for their whole life of getting fat, even though they're not fat. They they're, they're they're lean people, but their parents made fun of fat people. And they heard this as a kid and their whole life, they've been like psychotically obsessed with not getting fat and like think they're fat and they're not because that's not like a trauma, but it's a story about reality of if I get fat, I will be mocked. I will be rejected by society. People will talk bad about me. People will look down on me. You know, like all of those stories are just running the show. So that's what, you know, the deepest levels of transformation in my opinion, are being able to identify what stories you hold true about reality that are keeping you exactly where you are or what stories you hold about yourself, more importantly, that are keeping you where you are and being able to consciously choose. It's like choosing your identity, consciously choosing this is who I am and then making your actions match that over and over and over until it becomes my your language. new reality. <laughs> my language. I feel like you literally just quoted something that I say all the time. It's about nice. making your reality match right then. Yeah. And if you're, if you're living, if you, if you're 
and, th and this is it's crazy this goes into my next question i was going to ask what does alignment mean to you and for me when i talk about alignment i'm talking about does your reality match the vision of the person you want to be perfect right and if it doesn't then perfect. you're out you're out of alignment and you need to start doing the things that that person does mm, exactly right? and i would add does it match the person you are meaning taking that future reality that you feel is and like coming it. for yep. you and just saying that is me that is oh, my yep yep <laughs> And that's what I did truly. Like when I said like, yeah, it was still hard. I still had to do work, even though I was kind of messed up. That's, that was a mind game. I, I, I'm really happy that I decided to branch into the mindset and of, you know, I, I would say my, yeah. my niche in, in coaching for training and nutrition and biohacking is mindset. I love it. And I, cause I've always played little mind games, mind tricks on myself to, to get me to change behavior change. Okay. Like I've always yep. been like that. Right. And so what I, I didn't know anything. I had never consumed any mindset, anything when I was getting fit. I had never even read a mindset book in my life, but wow. I just decided I was like, okay, I'm just going to keep telling myself that I am super fit. And then I'm going to like, when I look at myself in the mirror, I'm not even going to see that. I'm going to see super fit me, super fit me, super fit me. And I just, I just started doing that. I was like, yep, I am super fit. I'm super freaking, I see it. I feel it. I taste it, you know? And I, that was just organic. And now that's like obviously a strategy I use and hear a lot about, but I'm like, it works. It a hundred percent works. But the biggest thing is like, it takes repetition, right? Because yeah. right yeah. now I could say I am that person, but what happens on Friday night when you went to a restaurant and everybody's drinking and having nachos, like, did you stay that person then? So that's what it takes like a lot of repetition. It takes those harder moments where it's like, you're tempted to go back into your old self and you will. Right. And then it's like, yeah. okay, did that feel congruent yeah. with who I say I am now? No, it did not. Oh. Okay. Try yeah. again next time. <laughs> I'm thinking of something that in the military, we, we had a phrase for non-commissioned officers called be no do. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Be, have you heard that? Be no I have. Do. I love it. Be, be, be the example, be that, be that, be that pillar, um, know your job and do the right thing. Um, uh, and do whatever and do, you know, do that. Just do it. If that's who you want to be, do it. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm taking, I'm hearing what you're, what you're saying. And those are, that's what keeps coming to my head. You want to, you don't want to just say, I see this person in the mirror. You want to be that person. You want to know who that person is and you want to do what that person does. All day, all day, all day every, day. every day. It's yeah. not just about saying it. It's not about mantras, right? It's about actively living that life. Yeah. I mean, the vision and the feeling and the, you know, identification that, that, that's where it's born. That's, that's where the concept is born, yep. but it's not, it, it will never manifest until you actually do those things, you know? And it, that's what I'm saying is like, you're going to mess up. You're going to, yes. you're going to go back into old yeah. patterns. Like we are not yep. robots, you know? <laughs> and actually the <laughs> fact that we do go into old patterns when we're trying to sh behavior change it's like, sometimes I think we underestimate how awesome that is in a way, because that resistance to change is what's going to help us maintain that new reality. Like if we didn't have that, we would have to learn how to walk again every day, every, or we would time. have to yeah, learn how absolutely. to talk again every day. That's like, a really good perspective. The yeah. The process of change helps us avoid the process of change. That's, yeah, that's exactly. Crazy. Like yeah. that whole, like it's hard yeah. to change patterns. Well, good. So if I can just get over this hump, that, that means like, I will just be integrated into this new reality. Once I that's, have fully is, embodied it, you know, yay. Um, expected. Yes. I like that a lot. <laughs> I'm still, I'm totally still on that. I like that. Um, but let's talk about one more thing you said, because, uh, we haven't talked too much. I think I've told you I'm working on my next book as well. Uh, it'll be out towards the end of this year. Um, and the title of the book is Body Confidence. Nice. And you actually literally said what it, the book is about. Mm -hmm. uh, you said confidence is not because you were not confident because of the way you look. Yeah. And that is what that is what this is about. That. Exactly. And I think, um, can you talk about what confidence in your body means to you? I would love to. Because you said that, I like, I can't not, I got, I can't leave that one. We got it. We got it. Mm. Yeah. No, I appreciate the question because- Wow. You know, I can give myself credit. Like I, I, I have come a long way from those days of all that wounded pressure stuff with my body. And yeah, do, can I say confidently that I feel that I have body confidence? Yes. 
but the, it's it's not what you think. It's because it's rooted in an actual relationship with my body that has nothing to do with what it looks like. Mm -hmm. I'm not thinking about that. Right. Like I noticed I posted a workout video today and I was doing some split carries, you know, kettlebells are yep. for listeners is like your, it's like a farmer's walk, but one arm is up. Okay. Yep. And I turned around and I noticed I had like a little bit of fat underneath my shorts and I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't care. And I actually chose to, I wasn't going to include the turnaround because I don't really like to put my butt on Instagram a lot. Cause it's just, I, uh, you know uh, what I mean? I put my butt on Instagram all the time. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's just like, you know, I, I, I guess as a woman, it's like, I want to make sure that I'm not like, I'm not communicating like that's what I'm about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah. I, I, I included it because you could see a little bit of fat under my shorts because yeah. I, I understand the unreal the, the unbelievable levels of pain that so many women have and hold themselves to such high standards and i know that in my current reality i come across as this extremely fit woman that some woman who has like a belly right now and like can't lose it that like she looks at me as like oh she you know she has it figured out and i'm like i want yeah. her to know that i got some cellulite you know what i mean and i don't care i'm not like I, I am lean and strong and healthy and thriving. And it is okay if I have a little bit of cellulite. Like that, that's not a thing <laughs> for me. You know, it's not a problem for me. Yeah. Um, but, you know, what it really has boiled down to, and I'll share, this is like the crux of like what helped me get out of all of that not good enough stuff. And, you know, I was running from fear all the time. If I gained a little weight during my cycle, I'd get all been out of shape and like, oh, I, you know, and I didn't have all these little bingy behaviors and all of that. I have not had any of that in years. Not since I did that freaking bikini competition. That messed me up for a second. But, but other than that, yeah. you know, and that was in 2021. So we're coming up and it's next month will be three years since that. So like in three years, I have not, I don't have any sort of bingy type things or like worried about my weight or any of that. Mm -hmm. And it has come out of love and building an actual relationship with my body. And I will tell you how I've done it. And I know it sounds weird and wacky and cuckoo, but it's awesome. Like I actually, like I express gratitude to my body a lot. So when I sit in meditation, very common for me is to just feel my body all over the place. Just kind of, I'm just noticing like I would with my kids, like if my son came in and he was limping, like love is noticing that, right? Like something's wrong, like he, he's hurt. Right. And so same with my body, like, is anything hurting or like need my attention? I'm, I'm here with you. I'm noticing. Right. And then if something is like, I might ask it what it needs. So if I notice, you know, maybe my scapula, you know, feel like my stabilizers feel a little, I'm like, oh, what's that? I'm like, and I'll just be like, I'll just ask it. I'm like, what's going on or what do you need? And I'm, I, I play with it. I might be making you up talk crap. To your but... body? What are you talking about? What's, what's up with you? No, yeah, I, I told you, I told you it sounds wacky and no, whatnot, I mean, but it has been amazing. Something, yeah. It's not something I've thought about intentionally, but uh -huh. I will be like, Hey, what the hell's going on back there with you? Like I, I have done. Yeah. Why don't you say scapula? Cause that's where I, I can uh -huh. vividly recall where that's where I talk to myself. Yeah. It's a common uh, spot, right? The, uh, you know, yeah. it's like, especially if you're lifting a lot and all that's, that. That's interesting. I never thought about. Because I do talk a lot about how the things that you're dealing with on your journey are relationship issues with yourself. Yes. Just yes. like they are with your spouse, with your with your parents, with your kid. Like it's all about a relationship. And in a lot of cases, um, going seg you know, going back a little bit to what we were talking about a second ago with the old things, the past things that have happened in your life, it's about you dealing with your old relationship that you're trying to get away from. And then develop a new relationship with something new. Yeah. It's yourself. It's still yourself on both ends. It's just a different relationship. Yeah. And I see myself and my body is two completely different things. Like my body no, it, is so different. It's more different than me as a tree is to me. You're right. So I see okay. it. Yeah. Yeah. I see it as a completely, I actually see it as like a lot of different, like, like all of my cells, I almost see them as like little people, you know, like my liver is like a different, <laughs> a different thing. And my pancreas is a different, right. like little being or my, you know, like my blood and my, the, the muscle cells and all of that, like, it's kind of playful and silly, but really it has built such a loving relationship. Like, and sometimes in that like body scan, like mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, sometimes I'll like imagine my, my intestines or yeah. my liver or my heart or my brain. And I'll just kind of sit with it. I'm not really like talking or thinking. I'm just like trying to imagine it. 
you know, mm-hmm. just trying to build mm-hmm. that connection to it. And I might say, is there anything you need? And yeah, sometimes like, I'm like, I'm probably just making up stuff. Like something will come in and it was like fish oil. And I'm like, you got it. And they're like, <laughs> Hey, what's it going to hurt? You know, <laughs> well, hurt. at least it's, it's a, it's a way to develop self-awareness and mm-hmm. creating the time and space to listen to what your body's telling. Exactly. However you can do that, if that's working for you, that's awesome. I love that. And yeah. I think that that's a way that I can relay the concept to other people down the road. And I think people listening to this video, if, you, if you've ever heard Coach Bronson or anybody, a counselor, therapist, say you need to learn how to sit and be quiet and listen to yourself, this is a way that you can do that. Start talking to your body. Think about yeah. your body as another person or another being yeah. that you're having a conversation with and give it time to speak its mind. Yeah, I look at it as almost like a a, a kingdom of subjects, and I'm mm. like the queen, you know, oh, or there you go. The king. and <laughs> and they, like they really want to thrive, but they need yeah, resources, yeah. you know, they well, need vitamins, minerals, amino acids, water, you know, all of that, and it's like I know they want to thrive. I fully, yes. I, our bodies want to thrive, oh, and they're doing the powerful. absolute best that they can with what yeah. we're giving it. And if yeah. we're going to be a good queen or a good king to our little kingdom, then we're going to pay attention to what it's telling us. We're going to give it, the, give them the resources they need. And then we get to thrive and feel really happy because we are being good stewards of this kingdom of oh, cells that it. we are the host of, you know, I that we're it. the yeah. king or queen of. Yeah. So how, how, let me take that a little one step further. How does you said gratitude, showing gratitude to your body mm-hmm. along the same lines of what you just talked about of being a good steward to your body. How, how is exercise and nutrition that, because we, you know, you were talking about talking to your body. That's one thing to help you develop a good relationship and understand your connection to what your body is and what it needs, but mm-hmm. showing gratitude or, or being a good steward of your body. Um, talk about exercise and nutrition and how the, the role that plays. Sure. I was just having this conversation last night at dinner with some friends. I was, one of the guys was saying like he went, he hired a trainer and like went through a huge, pretty big transformation. And he yep. said, he's like, I still hate it every time I go. I don't want to go. I just force myself to. Right. Yep. And, you know, there's a lot of people in that camp. And I just shared, I was like, you know, respectfully, but I was like, for me, like I, I go in there so consistently because I feel so amazing afterwards. And it, it brings so many results in my life that I want, but also the experience of it is literally fun for me. It's like my favorite part of the day. I can't wait. And I've learned how to make it that way. Right. One is I don't force myself to train in ways that I don't, like it doesn't feel in alignment to me. Like, let's say I'm really tired and I like, I have some sort of heavy leg workout and I'm just my, everything in me is saying like, that you is not a good it. idea. You have to do it. It's right. in That's what you have to do. <laughs> right. I'm just like, I, it's like you can feel in every fiber of your being like, that is yeah. not a good idea today. So I'll just walk or maybe I'm like, maybe I feel like doing like a, a, a light hit circuit with like, you know, just like box jumps and battle robes and things that aren't mm-hmm. like super hypertrophy focused, but I can get my blood going and, you know, that kind of do three sprints to a box jump to jump rope. Like for me, that, that's, I'm in pretty good cardiovascular shape. So that's like a pretty easy, get my, you know, my mood up, right? Like yeah. a lot of exercise for me is, it's a combination of love for my body and myself because we live in this symbiotic relationship. So like when I give my body what it needs and it needs exercise and you get so many benefits for your body when it does that, Mm -hmm. I also feel better. Like my soul feels better because I've got every neurochemical in my physiology that boosts my ability to regulate my emotions, make good decisions in my life, get creative epiphanies, um, you know, make decisions faster, all of this stuff. I reap the benefit of all of that when my body is performing at a high level. So exercise, that is like my main driver for exercise is I want to feel good, (laughs) period. That's it. Yep. And and a little bit of I want to go play. And my inner child, like like I've always liked playing, right? I love to play. And it feels like play to me. I like so, getting in so, that like mean face, like, Wah! like that's fun for me. <laughs> so what I'm hearing is it's possible to go to the gym for reasons other than just trying to get ripped and in shape. You can <laughs> yes. have fun while you're doing it. And there are more benefits than how you look when you go. Yeah. And on to your body confidence, that whole thing. Yeah. I 
I was talking about this at dinner last night too. I'm like, I'm not trying to look muscular, like be a muscular chick. I actually had to really, I mean, I want muscle, but like from an aesthetic, like how I look, like I know muscle is good for me, but I'm not trying, I had to do work to get past, cause like my arms are pretty jacked. Like sometimes from the side, like my arms look big, you know, <laughs> like I have big delts and big triceps and biceps. Right. And so I had to do like, work on myself to get past that as a woman. Cause I started to like mm -hmm. limit myself on all my shoulder workouts and all that stuff. Cause I was like, Oh, I don't want to get like huge. I don't want to be like one of those like man women, you know, like I had all these <laughs> kind of stories. And so I, right. I did work on it and I'm like, you know what? Screw it. Like if, if I am going to do what I love doing and come what may, if I get super freaking crazy muscular, cool. If I don't cool, but I, I love the actual action of lifting and doing hit circuits and all of that. I think it is fun. And also awesome. like there's a nervous system benefit. There's so many benefits. It's just so like, many benefits. Yep. <laughs> from, you know, my mom passed away in November for, from Alzheimer's and it's like, she had type two diabetes and I'm just like, okay, so I'm basically offsetting all of that. It's yeah. especially when I eat well, blood, you know, insulin sensitivity, mental health, all of that. So there's a benefit. Um, also like it is the most potent biohack there is. I think weight training and exercise in general is the most underrated thing in the biohacking world or health optimization world because nobody's really selling it, you know? I, I'm so glad you said that. I, mean, <laughs> I feel like I'm the only one that says stuff like this sometimes. It really, it drives me crazy. <laughs> Right. It's like, um, so how about the biggest hitters, like the rocks in the jar? And I'll never forget. I would totally call people out because I was at a biohacking conference in Orlando and I was staying at the event venue and there's like, I don't know, thousands of people at this thing, all these yep. biohackers and they all got their aura rings and their every freaking device there is. And oh yeah, yep. I have that sauna. No, I have that one. And you know, and, and, and I go to the gym in the morning and there's like, there's nobody there. I saw like two guys from the conference in yep. there. And yep. I was like, where are you guys? Where, exactly. where the freak are you? You want to optimize your health? Why are you not in here right now? Why are you spending $2,000 on some random th biomat thing when you're not even training? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we know the answer to that, right? Because spending $2,000 is easier than sweating. It is. It is. Right? It is. Sorry, I got on a little tangent. And you can tell I'm heated. No, about that okay. One too. I do it all the time. And, <laughs> and, and, I mean, we're, 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 we could both go on this tangent and we could totally derail this entire conversation. Um, I, can, I can answer on food too, your nutrition question. Yeah. So the, that aspect of things, cause that took me forever, right? Coming off a standard American diet. And now like, it is the same exact thing as the body. It, it's like, what do you need? What will be most honoring of you little subjects? Like I really think like personifying your cells yeah. and your organ systems is a really helpful hack to like wanting to nurture yourself, right? And as eating in a self honoring way. Like, so I don't, my desire for junk is really low because like in my mind, I'm literally like, I'm like envisioning the inside of my body. And I'm like, how much am I willing to do that to you? It's not like I don't have treats and stuff sometimes, but it's within sure. reason. Cause it's like, this is all, thank you for dealing with this, you know, but I know it's not like the best. And you're also missing out on some nutrients because I just ate that delicious toffee that was made up the road. And that was really, really good. And I enjoyed every second of that, but I'm not going to do that all the time because yep. that's not great building materials for you guys, you know? Right. So, right. Yeah. Same. It's just that so, loving relationship. Yeah, no, I like that. And let's, let's take that one step further and talk about, you know, I'm the, you started talking about subjects and Sim Cities popped in my head, right? <laughs> Remember the game Sim Cities? Did you ever see that? Where it's uh -uh. like a virtual game where, you know, it, the game is basically you're the mayor of the city. Okay. And you have to develop the city. And over time, you know, your population goes up, your your, your taxes have to go up because you're, you're, you built a road over here. So now you got to raise taxes. But now people are leaving because you get to, your taxes are too high. Right. And, oh, no, now there's a... A hurricane that just came through town and knocked down eight buildings. You got to figure out how to get the money to fix. What that. a great name! Like it's just all this stuff, right? And I'm thinking about this like your body, and it's like, okay, subjects. I'm the king of my of my subjects. One of the things I have to do is not just listen to them, but when something's not working, I have to figure out what's going to work. Exactly. Right. So um, there's got to be some sort of 
method in place or something that I do to listen, try something. Hey, did that work? It didn't work. What didn't work about it? What can we try next? How, yeah. how does that work for you? Yeah, I love that. Cause like, okay, when we have, when we don't have a relationship with our body, we're very demand, it's, it's expectations, pressure and demands, right? So it's kind of like, I hate to say it, but it's like, if you kind of have an unhealthy relationship with your kids, it's a lot of expectations. This is how you're going to be. And you're going to, you're going to do basically like whatever I think is best for your life. That's what you're going to be. And that's how you're going to be. And if you're not, I'm going to shame you and be frustrated as crap with you. Right. Right. And it's, that's how people are with their bodies too. When the, when the relationship isn't there, like I found parenting is so much easier to navigate when you have a real relationship of like respect, love, actual intimacy, you know, you can really connect and talk to your kids. It's so much easier to navigate. And then it's exactly the same way with the body, because if you are like, you know, looking at your body fat as like, ugh, I hate you. You're so gross. Well, you have <laughs> yeah. no relationship with your body fat. Yeah. So start with building a relationship with your body fat. Like actually, I would say thank it for saving your life as many times mm -hmm. as it has. You'd be dead if you didn't have that body fat. And it is it is because you, I'm not saying this in a shamey way, but it is because you ate more than your right. body blood sugar could handle at the time or your body could handle. And so it put it into storage for you. And then we sit there and we're like, oh, I hate this stupid body. Like, why won't you just lose yeah. weight? You know, and it's like, I get it, you know, I was there, but if we can like sink into like, Hey, thank you. Like, thank you for saving my life a bunch of times. Like, I wonder what is actually going on here and like mm. building that relationship of like, okay, well let's try this. Oh, that didn't work. Like that whole vegan experiment I did didn't work. Okay. And, you know, and instead of like, Oh, nothing ever works. I'm sick of trying. Right. Yeah. Something that just <laughs> hit me, your body is always listening to you. It, yes, 100%. Your body is always listening to you and receiving the input from you. It doesn't have a choice not to. Yep. The problems yep. come in when we yep. don't listen to it. And if wow. anybody wants a great read wow. on that, you basically just like, uh, like channeled through the ethers, the yep. biology of belief by Dr. Bruce Lipton. That's what that book okay. is about. So yep. Like to back you up, because he's a cell biologist and he's proving all of this through cell mm -hmm. behaviors, mm -hmm. according to our thoughts, like it, that book has become like the crux of how I coach. Like it is okay. like, so if somebody comes to me and they have hypothyroidism, for example, really common, yeah. I'm like, we're not saying I'm, that. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to put that in the, in the show notes for this. What yeah. Was the that? biology oh. of belief by Dr. Bruce Lipton. I cannot recommend that book enough because what, what it really gets in you, your takeaway from it is like we forget about the placebo effect. Uh -huh. We know the placebo. People are taking sugar p pills and right. they believe it, it. they are healing and they heal with a sugar pill. Nothing was in there. Yep. We forget yep. that. Like try, uh, apply that to your weight loss efforts or your muscle building efforts or your healing from hypothyroidism or SIBO or you know, TBI or whatever you got, your autoimmune issue or whatever. And you just keep saying, I have Hashimoto's, I have, I, oh. I you know, and you just oh. keep telling your body over and over and over. I have this, I, ha I have lines. I know I'm challenging people here a little bit, but I'm telling you, I have use this for years now in my coaching and it is so powerful. It's like, I'm not saying you don't quote unquote have that. I know we're looking at your labs and we, yes, obviously like your teeth, free teeth is low and all these kind of things. I'm not denying that. I'm just saying, we don't want to keep saying that. We don't want to keep reinforcing. Right? Yeah. So we want right? right. So we sink into yeah. the moment of what well, do I just, need right now? What do I need? Right. right? right. That goes into what we talked about earlier about identity. Okay, your identity now is Hashimoto's. Great. The identity that you want is not. So right. stop saying you have it. That right. person doesn't have Hashimoto's. So right. if you're going to say you have Hashimoto's, you are no longer channeling that person right. as you want to be. Right. It's right? more like, I wonder what foods are bloating me. Or I wonder why I keep having all this bloating. Or I wonder why I'm so tired in the afternoons. Maybe I should just take a nap versus oh my gosh it's because of the Hashimoto's blah, blah, blah. like you know you get into this but if we can yeah. come into this curious like I'm just tired right now or I just noticed when I eat that thing my body doesn't like it 
So I'm going to honor that. I'm going to, we're going to, we're going to, we triggered, you triggered somebody, some people already, I'm sure, by saying that. But triggered? Take, I know. We're going and to take I, that a step further. Okay. <laughs> Give me your thoughts on the idea of using, and I, and then, it's fortunate that it works because it works for a lot of people and that's a good thing. But I, I think in my experience, it's, it's actually hindered more people than it's helped, at least that I've worked with. The, I am a blank addict right. comment and statement and thought process. What right. are your thoughts on that? Ooh, I feel like I'm not going to read the comment section of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I feel like right now, but I'll be honest. Um, yeah, I think it's the same exact thing is like yeah. reinforcing um, I am anything that you're saying, I am, I mean, you're just, that is your reality now. And I don't mean to, I understand that addiction is real. And I understand yes. that many people are genetically predisposed to like certain things. Like why are some people addicted to weed and some people it's alcohol and some people it's sugar and some people it's uppers, you know, any sort of upper caffeine sure. or Adderall. You know, whereas the next person, like the the weed person is like, oh, I don't like Adderall. And the Adderall person's like, oh, I don't like weed. Right. Yep. So there is like a neurology standpoint to a lot of this. I think addictions are clues. So please know that I'm saying what I, all I'm saying. I'm, I, I understand all that. Yep. And I still think it's important to, to pick a different statement. I, I would say more like, I don't want, let's say it's sugar addiction. Cause I challenge this one sometimes because I definitely felt sugar addicted when I had all my, you know, suboptimal eating patterns before I ever uh -huh. got in shape. I've totally, mm -hmm. my whole family says it, like we got the garrison sweet tooth. Like it's like a whole thing, right? <laughs> yes. Oh, everyone says it, you know, it's my dad yeah. and he's like, we got it from my mom. And like, you know what I'm saying? It's like this whole thing. And I totally felt that way. And now for my personal experience with me, for me, I can have sugar sometimes and I don't feel addicted to it at all. I forget about it for a long time. It doesn't do that to me. So cool. I'm not undermining that somebody else may feel that way, but I do think I, this is a, I know it's a personal opinion. So give me a break guys, but I, I, it's just been my experience in addition to maybe like a neurological or, you know, some sort of predisposition to like, maybe you have issues with dopamine or serotonin or GABA that's causing you to really want some of these things that I, I'm, I respect that. I also think that, um, when you have these statements of I'm an addict, it disempowers us. Took it took the words right out of my mouth. Oh my yeah. God. Yes. It, 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 yeah. It's a feeling of like, there's this restrictive mindset with it of like, it has power over me. Like I can't, I have to completely abstain and I'm not I'm, granted I, hardcore addiction stuff. Like that's why I'm trying to be so careful with what I'm saying. Cause like, yeah, yeah. Well, I, 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 yeah, no, I, I, I think understanding, you know, we both have clients and have dealt with clients who are, who are going through these things. Right. right. So yeah. I'm not trying that to... It's not, we're not discounting how anybody yeah. feels with their whatever. Um, mm -hmm. but understanding that, words have power understanding that words are the expression of belief so yeah. if you say something it's because that's what you believe you're not saying something right. out of the blue it didn't come from nowhere so yeah. if you say i am an addict blah 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 whatever yeah. comes after that you believe that you are an addict and if you don't want to be an addict anymore you have to change that belief yeah like i like just a little different uh statement like something like I don't want sugar. Like, let's say it's like sugar addict. Like, I don't yeah. like what, I don't like what sugar brings to my life at all. Right. I don't want yeah. it. Focus you know? on the change. Focus on something, some other aspect of that and give it and, and make it something that you have power over, you have control over. You know, mm -hmm. that's still probably the biggest, the two pieces to that, to those types of statements for me are, you know, it's reinforcing somebody you don't want to be it's reinforcing an identity and a reality that you're trying to move away from right and number two it is absolving yourself of the responsibility of the change because it's not my problem it's the addiction mm. right so i if i want to change it's the addiction's fault that i can't interesting right? yeah and and that is that's a challenge that i've had to deal with my clients say look mm -hmm. you're not an addict you have a response and a habit loop or a, a process that you have ingrained in your body to respond to this food in a certain way. Mm -hmm. If we can change that, then we can do some other things down, down the road. And you get, you have a, you, you know, you can improve your quality of life. You can improve your health. You can improve your mindset, all those things. But 
the minute you give up your ownership of the issue, you're stuck. Yeah. And I can right? say this, that. that from my personal experience, when I still had like bingey behaviors, like it's mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm going to go get donuts or like, I just had this weird stuff when I still had that, even though I was already fit. Okay. Yeah. But I still hadn't dealt with some of this. It was this disempowered, like this re restrictive, like I shouldn't have that. Like it's bad to have that, which made it so much more juicy. Like, and yes. now the reason that it doesn't happen is because like, I fully know I can have it. I just yep. don't want it. Like I yep. found other things to eat that give me all my fixes that help me feel good. You know, all my different little textures and all my different little flavor profile, like that keep me feeling good. Like, but it really is, it was the disempowered mindset of like, I want that thing, but I shouldn't, that yeah. will just screw you up. Like what you want needs to change. It's yes. like once what yes. you want changes, it's like, I don't, I know I can have all that. Right. I know I can do that. I don't want to do that. Like work on shifting what you want and then yep. you forget about it. I'd say, you know, most of my friends who are like healthy and thriving, like they don't, they they have gotten to a point where they're like, they don't want fast food. They're like, ew, like I'm not eating that. You know, like yeah. the, the group I went out to eat with last night, we were already at a restaurant and it was like, the food was like, did not, it did not look like we were all really hungry and wanted like an epic meal. And it was like, we left. We're like, no dude, like we've been like almost fasting like all day, like, you know, eating very little, like I want something good to eat, you know? Right. And so- yep it what we wanted was like nutrients Substance, good flavor yeah. like quality so if you can shift into that like it's you forget about all those like maniacal like i want junk stuff but it's yeah. a journey <laughs> in the in in my book that's coming up i have a section where i talk about taking the emotion out of your options taking the emotions out of your choices hmm. and instead of thinking of things as a pros and cons because that's how people mostly yeah. look at their options it's either it's this or it's that. With pros and cons, we have a tendency to throw our bias into the conversation. Well, mm -hmm. it's a con because I'm going to feel like crap tomorrow if I do this. It's a con because I'll be bloated, but I'm going to really enjoy it. I've had a tough week. I could do this. Everyone else mm -hmm. is like, there's no, it's the emotion and the bias and the preference and the habits that you have based on those things can easily be overcome in a pros and cons yeah. Right. Yeah. When you look at it as a net positive or net negative towards your goal, it's a whole different story because it's yeah. black and white and there's no emotion. If I do this, what is the effect on me trying to lose 10 pounds in the next six months? If I do this, what is the impact that it's going to have on me trying to build muscle and gain two pounds of muscle in the next three months? If I do this, how is it going to impact my brain health as I get older? Like, it is a black and white. This is not at all going to help me do X, Y, or Z. Is mm -hmm. it a net negative and net positive? And you know, it, there's no question yeah. at that point. And that's, that's kind of a tool that I use to kind of help people understand, like, the choices when you look at the goal in black and white and get your emotions out of the conversation are always a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll add, like, what I'm hearing in that, too, is a pattern of being able to think ahead in your life of oh, yeah. like, cause I, I was just talking about this to somebody today too. Like, okay. Like we were talking about when people go to bars and get like completely plastered. Right. And we were talking about, <laughs> that's you Bronson. That used to be me. Yep. Used to yeah, be. Used to used be. To okay. Be. <laughs> so, you know, no judgment, no judgment at all. It's just like, <laughs> I was thinking about it. Like we were thinking about like, why, why, like I have no desire to do that at all. Right. Uh, and not why? At all anymore. Yep. Because I would say most of my decision-making in my life is thinking about the impact that it will have in the future. So I think about the next day, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, I don't want to feel, I mean, I've, I don't want to drink alcohol anyway, but like where my mind would go if I was considering drinking like eight vodkas and like all these things, like my mind would go to like immediately thinking of how I was going to feel tomorrow. Right. right. And I'm like, Oh, I don't, I'm not going to do that to myself. And then it would drop into the moment. Oh, plus like, I'll probably like make bad decisions and like, you know, but my first thing is like, how is that going to impact me? Right. Yeah. And yeah. I don't think that, 
I think that some people need practice on that. They only think about right now. Yes. They, they aren't practiced on thinking like, how will I feel tomorrow about this choice? How will I feel next week about this choice? It's just like right now is the only thing that matters. And you have to yep. practice thinking the way that you just described of like, how am I? And I, I found that out when I was trying to get over eating brownies and cookies and McDonald's and all that stuff. I, what I, my little mind trick that I played on myself was, um, pretend you just ate it and it's five minutes after. And I would literally right. like imagine myself like eating brownies. I'm like, okay, yep, swallowing right. them. Okay. All right, it's five minutes after, and I would feel how I felt. And I was yep. like, oh, I feel so I hate how I feel right now. I don't like this. Yep. Okay, I'm just gonna make like a chocolate peanut butter protein shake and I'm gonna put like a ton of peanut butter in it. But that will be better than the brownies, you know? Yeah, so you're right, right, right. For sure. I like that. You know, think about where you're gonna feel five or ten minutes later afterwards. Yeah. I like that because that's that's the that's when it hits, right? You do it and then you're like, oh, why Right. Because they're not you know? practiced at like that. Yep. Whereas Absolutely. I think we are. And yeah. a lot of people are. Yeah, that's a that's a good that's a good thing. All right. I got two more things I wanna I wanna to bring up. Um we talked about communicating with your body. I'm gonna take a step back a little bit. The the thought came to mind while I was listening to you talk that if we're not providing input and doing the things that we need to do, uh, or sorry, if we're not listening to what our body needs from our body, right? Not mm -hmm. looking, and that's not just, the, you know, what you were talking about, talking to your body and kind of listening and being aware of what it's saying, but literally like your, your body's gonna tell you when you yeah. get up in the morning and everything hurts, your body's yeah. telling you something. Yeah. And you can't walk up and down the stairs because you can't catch your breath, your body's telling you something, mm -hmm. right? These are things, you know, your blood work, your body's telling you something. So yeah. these are all different ways your body talks to us. If we're not yeah. listening to that um, and we're just trying to do what we think needs to be done, then, mm -hmm we're getting input from places that have no idea what our body needs. Yeah. Right. How do you talk to clients about looking at the information that they're getting and making sure it applies to what they actually need? Man, you know, I feel like my clients are kind of awesome this way. Like they're, they're, they're yeah. hungry for it. You know, like they're, they, they, I, I don't know. Let me, let me think on this for the listener. Like, um, yeah, I guess there's a certain level of denial that I could see occasionally where it's like, we don't want to change our behavior. The, 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 the resistance is then I'll have to change my behaviors. And as there's we all know, point, behavior yeah. change is difficult. Or maybe that some people have fear of like blood labs and things because they aren't sure. Like what if something comes back, quote unquote, bad and nobody mm -hmm. knows how to fix it? I'd rather just not know. There's some of that crowd. Um but I think it's, it's rooted in either I, I don't, I like, I think it's like there's some sort of result they're getting from their current reality that they like and mm -hmm. want to keep it that way. And so they don't want to like address mm -hmm. it. They're Boy, getting something out you, of the you current say that a little reality. For the people in the back. Like, <laughs> <on> the <laughs> yeah. It's like, I don't want to change it. Cause then I might lose X, you know, then I might yeah. have to give yeah. up this, you know? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Does the effort to get healthy or getting healthy matter more? The effort to getting there versus being healthy yep. matter more. Or is more like whatever word you want to put there matter? Is it impactful? Is it more whatever, whatever more word you want to put? In. Well, the, I mean, the effort is the best, most crazy enjoyable parts the best part the effort is the best part like, i knew you're gonna say that you're, you're re like i'm living in a reality of a lot of effort right now yeah. Yeah. and I'm, I'm so grateful you know i'm so great i'm the recipient of all of that right yep. but and then now i still have other things where i'm kind of doing that and then i'll be the recipient of that you know level of mm -hmm. um effort but i remember I'll, I'll just share with this i remember hitting my goal weight because i had a weight back then when i was in my wounded self which yep. you know yep. so i remember the day i wanted to be 135 pounds and that was like insanely hard to the point that i was 11 percent body fat you know what i'm saying like holy crap mm -hmm. because i had these unrealistic this is before i became a coach you know right right um and I stepped on that scale and it, granted, of course I had been like 137, 136. So it's like, I knew I was coming and I'll never forget. I stepped on the scale at the gym and it was the most anticlimactic moment ever. It was just like, yep. yep. And in that moment I realized I was like, wow, like 
that was a crazy journey. Like that was actually really like, it brought a lot of life to my soul. Like it was like, it was hard and twisty and turny, but it was awesome. Like now that I'm yeah. here, like I'm like scratching my head, like, all right, I guess I'll just, what do I do now? Lifting right? and eating like this. But like, you know, like even though it's hard, it, the journey is so fun if you will look at it that way. You know, yeah. so yeah, I mean, being, I, I also really appreciate being an ease though. And that's maybe the last thing I'll say on all this is for a while, I thought it was never going to be easy. I really believed that it was always going to be super hard to be like, not be fat essentially yeah. be lean to maintain my physique and be healthy. I was like, no, it's just hard freaking work. Like mm -hmm. it's always going to be, this It's always going to be hard. And I don't feel that way anymore. And I just want to share that because like when I was in the thick of all that, like it did feel like this never ending tunnel of like hard and applying myself and looking at all these patterns and all. But I'm finally in a place where I can truly say it's ease. Like I, I had the thought this more like lately I've been ha like, I have not been anywhere remotely close to like even trying to, I eat well, but I'm not like really haven't the past, you know, week, I haven't really been that focused on like protein. I'm just like eating whatever. Sound. I just had a bunch of goat cheese and almond crackers. There was no, not very much protein in that. Like I just yeah. haven't been like on top, but I'm like, I literally feel like I like can't get fat because I train yeah. hard. I sleep well. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that crazy? I've been I've been not really following anything for like a month and a half now. I've just been kind of chilling. And, you know, I looked at myself in the mirror this morning. I was like, okay, it might be time to kind of get back on track a little bit. I, I can see I can see some, you know, some things happening. Um, nothing crazy, obviously, but knowing that it's not it nothing it, nothing has happened to the point where it's affected my physical ability. Nothing's right. happened to the point where it's affected my health. Right. I put on a little extra, you know, pound or two in the waist. Okay. Right. Not no the deal. end of the world. No big deal. I feel great. I'm having a blast. I right. can do all the things I need to do. It's like, I still feel like when I look, when I'm working out, I look in the mirror, I'm like, yeah, I still got it. Okay, cool. Whatever. Like it's, I'm just having a yeah. fun, you know, I'm doing whatever I'm playing around with new programs and doing different things. It's like, yeah, it's like, uh, how much do I care about that? Right. Right. You know, to be able to be at a point where you're like, I think I put on two or three pounds in my waist. I don't care. Right. Like, what? I right. never would have thought that I'd be at, at that point. Yeah. You get there eventually, you know, like yep. we're at a pretty yep. advanced place in this whole journey. And obviously we've made it our, our vocation. So like, we've also been right. very educated and all of that, but I just want to like, kind of give that message of hope. Like if you can get through, it is such a hard journey. I will never forget how hard it was ever. How long have you, how long have you been? going through this process what's that my my journey started when i was about 37 38 so going on but how what are we now where i'm 51 how many what's what's the math on that like going on 14, 14 years years yeah 14 years yeah for me it's nine you know okay. so um yeah i mean it took me years to like i mean from when i was still like in kind of like a not great relationship with my body like that was mm -hmm. like five six years like the yeah. tendrils of it it's a gradual process and now you know it probably took me six years or something like that to get to a place of like ease like this yeah. feels like yeah. i don't i'm not i mean not to say i watch over my circadian rhythm i go to bed early i get up early i meditate i do personal growth and gratitude practice mm -hmm. i like say no to things manage my stress levels i eat well i supplement i train so when i say ease it's not like i'm just not doing any of those things it's just they feel sure. so normal now yeah. like it just it doesn't feel hard is what i'm saying it's just yes. like how i live yes. Easy and, and and I want to clarify for people that are that are thinking, well, that none of that sounds easy. Uh -huh. Easy is not doing less; it's making a lifestyle that works for you. Yes, yes, normal. Yes, feel normal. That's what it is. Yes, that's it's, what it is. And all you're doing when you're going through that transformation is changing what your what normal is to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Awesome, Terry. This has been fantastic, and we need to do this again because we could probably do another hour. Um, <laughs> Thanks. I love this kind of stuff, and uh, I definitely want to see your book when it comes out. Thanks. Likewise. Thank Make you sure so you much. Know. Thanks. All right. Where can people find you? Uh, Coach Tara Garrison on and T A R A on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok are probably the best platforms. And then my website is terragarrison.com. 
Fantastic. Which I love your website design, by the way. I need to hire that person who ever did that. It was me. I just used Kajabi. What? <laughs> yeah. Really? I just made it myself. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take it easy. Thank you very much. Thanks.